to read from Numbers chapter 13, verses 26 and 33. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev, the Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people, they are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak, come from the Nephilim. We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we look the same to them. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity, Lord, for us to come into your place of worship this first Sunday in 2016. Lord, we thank you for continuing to be who you are, oh God. We thank you for continuing to be who you are in our lives, individually as well as collectively. Lord, we ask for your wisdom this morning, Lord, as you speak to us. I pray that we hear your Holy Spirit, Lord, and I pray that our hearts are drawn closer to you and each other from the word that you have for us this morning. All this we have in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This morning... We can see from the passage of scripture and the commentary that was read, we have here Moses, the leader of Israel at the time, who was told by God to send 12 leaders from among the community to, look, to go and look into the land that he was giving to them. So the leaders went to the land that the Lord said was the Israelites, and they came back with a report to give to Moses, Aaron, and the leaders. They affirmed that the land was what Moses had said it was. It was a land that was filled flowing with milk and honey, and it was a great and prosperous land. But there was an excuse. There was a but. Although they were able to see what the land was, they were able to witness the land was what God said it was, they still had a but. The but was an excuse. It was something that they saw that was in the middle, in the way of what God had already told them. God had already told them and they had seen it for themselves, yet they still had a but. Let's look at some of the excuses in the buts that they had. They said that the people that were already in the land, which God said was theirs, was powerful. Excuse number one, that the people that were in the land was more powerful than their God. They also said that the cities were fortified, meaning they were secure and large. So what they were also saying is they cannot take possession of the land that the Lord had already told them was theirs. They also saw one of their excuses they saw as a hindrance was the descendants of Anak was there. And Anak was supposedly giants. And so another thing that they were saying that there are some people, there are some things that look bigger than what our God is. If we look back into the text, if we go back and review Genesis chapter 15, 18, and Genesis chapter 17, 8, God had already made a covenant with Abraham that he was going to give him and his descendants the land of Canaan. If we look at Exodus chapter 3, the Lord had also told Moses that he was going to deliver the Israelites from Egypt into the land of Canaan. Again, looking at Exodus chapter 23, verse 30, the Lord told Moses that he would drive the current residents of Canaan out little by little until, drive them out little by little until Israel increased in number to possess the land. Looking again at Exodus chapter 33, 2, the Lord told Moses that he would send an angel before them to drive out the current residents of Canaan so that they can take possession of the land. 
So as we can see, the Lord continually, he continually told the Israelites and continually let them know that he was in covenant with them. He was giving them the land. All they had to do was be obedient and take possession of it. God had directed they, their past, but they did not trust him to direct and guide their future. Some of the things that was hindering Israel from seeing God and believing that he can do what he said that he would do was their perspective. They, their perspective consisted of amnesia where they had forgotten that the Lord had already delivered them from Egypt. He had already parted the Red Sea. He had been with them in the wilderness and he had never forsaken them. They also had a wrong perspective. They were looking at things in their natural eyes rather, at, rather than looking through things in a spiritual perspective. They also had a lack of faith and trust in the God that had been with them, the God that had delivered them, the God that had right. continued to be with them over and over and over again. We can also say that they had a little bit of pride because they were more focused on themselves than they were on the God that had called and equipped them to do what he has called for them to do. They also had doubt on who God was and who God is because we know that God is greater than any man on this earth. But one of the things I want us to take a look at this morning is they had an issue with their self-identity. They did not realize that God had called them, he had equipped them, and they were his chosen people. And so when we have a lack of self-identity in who we are and who God has called us to be and who he has equipped us to be as his church, then we will not be able to move boldly into our destiny. So I would say, it's safe for me to say this morning that they were their own hindrance. I'll say it again. They were their own hindrance. Their mindset was to conquer the, the land, but yet all they had to do was possess the land because the Lord said it was already theirs. And so I'm coming here this morning to encourage you that the Lord has said it's already yours. You don't have to have a mindset to conquer it. All you have to do is possess it. I have chosen you. I said in my word that I am your God. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So all you have to do is go in and possess what I have already given to you. You have walked into it. You have been experienced what I have already said is yours. You have even taken some of its fruit, brought it back, and showed some other people. So all you have to do is possess the land. And the Lord just sent me to remind you and encourage you that it is already, already yours. And so all you have to do is boldly go into what he has given you to okay. possess. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for this day, God. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you continue to be with us, Lord. I pray that you just open our hearts and minds this morning, Lord, that we may hear directly from you, Lord, that we may be bold in what you have called for us to do, that we may be bold in being your church. Lord, we need you, we love you, and we thank you and we praise you in Christ's name. So back to the text, looking at verse 30. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. And so in order for us to boldly walk into our destiny, sometimes we have to silence the other voices. Right. Notice that there were 12 leaders that were sent to look at what the Lord had already said was theirs. So everyone was able to see it. Some of them got to carry it, but they all were able to witness it. I like to make a, a, just a sidebar statement here that everyone that's in a leadership position does not have the same faith. So we can't assume that just because someone is in a leadership role that they see God the way that we see God. We have to first know that we have to silence those other voices. Also notice that it wasn't an outsider that was talking against what God had already said. It was an insider. And sometimes we have people that's close to us and that's connected in our circle that may have some type of leadership quality or leadership skill, but they're not ready to go to that next step. And so sometimes we have to silence the voices of those people that are close around us. Notice that Caleb, he was the only one that silenced the voices of the other people. And so they came back with a report of what they had saw in the land. They said, yes, it is true, the land is prosperous. Yes, it is true, the land is good. But the people, they are strong. We can't go in there. It's secure. This is a land. But what we must understand is when God has already told us something, when God has already prepared it for us, when God has already strengthened us, when God has continued to be with us over and over and over again, there 
should be no choice other than for us to trust the word that he has already spoken to us. Sometimes we have too many other voices that's in our ear and that's trying to direct us and telling us what we can and can't do. But God has already told us. He has already equipped us. He has already taught you. He has already prepared it for you. All you have to do is go in and possess it. And so they had a mentality to go in and conquer something. They said the people are big. And then and then they said, here's its fruit. Look at it. I, I even brought you something to show that it is what God has said. And there was still an excuse. And so as you are walking into what God has called you to walk into, as we are standing firm as Christians, as we are standing firm as a church, don't expect everyone to agree with what you are doing. Don't expect everyone to support the choices that you are making. There will be some voices that you have to silence, and those will be some people that are close to you. And so we have to know that when we are walking boldly into our destiny, we have to have that ho the Holy Spirit that is leading us and guiding us. This cannot be done on our own. We have to silence those other voices. But let's look at verse 31. It says, but when the men who had gone up with him said, we can't attack those people, they are stronger than we are. And so in order for us to boldly walk into our destiny, we have to silence the other voices. But then we also have to know that everyone isn't ready. There are some people that is, they're not ready to go to the next level. There's some, I'm sure there's a lot of people that have set New Year's resolutions. And you know, we start off real strong when we set that resolution. And then some of us even get some people to work with us because, you know, I need some help. I need you to encourage me. But you have to understand that everyone isn't ready to go to the next level. One thing about a destiny is your destiny is meant for you. It is God's will for your life. You have to walk into it, but you don't create it. God creates your destiny. And so everyone is not ready to walk into your destiny with you. Everyone cannot handle what God is doing in your life because some people still want to do back what they did when they were in Egypt. But you must understand that we have to, one, silence those voices and know everyone isn't ready. Trying to hold on to people that's pulling us back will only yeah. take us back further. Right. But if we let go and walk into what God has called for us to walk into, if we stand strong and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us, then we will understand and know that we are who we are. We cannot change who we are. Right. This is who I was right. destined Amen. to be. God created me this way. And yes. if you don't like it, kick rocks. Amen. Amen. <laughs> You can't change who you are, but you also must understand that everyone isn't ready for who you are. Uh -huh. right. Right. Some people liked you. Some people loved me when I was at when the club. Say that. Say it right now. They loved me then. But now there's some people that just can't get with me. And, I, mean, yep. I felt yep. bad at first. Like, what am I doing? No. trying to stay back there. Yes. Yes. I have something that I have to do. Yes. And so we have to get to the point to where we know everyone isn't ready for what God is doing in our lives. Mm -hmm. Everyone isn't ready. And another thing about a destiny, your destiny is what God has set up for you. It's your will. And so it's not just because God set it up, it doesn't mean it's all peaches and cream because there's some struggles uh -huh. that you're going to have to go through when you are going through your destiny. If I if I look back on my last year, 2015, I had to look at some things that I went through that was part of my destiny that if it was my choice, I wouldn't have wanted to go through them. But because I went through them, I knew God was with me and God taught me lessons through that and I became a stronger person. And some people can't handle you or be with you when you're struggling. They want to let you go. They only right. be with you when you are going through Amen. the Amen. But you must understand that everyone isn't ready to go through this process with you. And so there's just some people that you are going to have to let them go. go. Yeah. Amen. And so look at verse 32. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. And so in order for us to go boldly into our destiny, we have to silence the other voices. We have to know everyone isn't ready, but we can't become distracted by lies. Sometimes when we are continuing to listen to what other people say, we begin to believe it. 
And then other times we don't believe it, but so many people around us begin to believe it that we begin to question ourselves and question who we are and question our own identity. Uh -huh. But yeah. we cannot become distracted by those lies. We must understand that even a little piece of truth is a lie. Don't distort what God has already told you trying to please other people because everyone isn't ready. Everyone is not going to go into the land that God has promised because they have a different perspective on themselves. Sometimes we can hinder ourselves by the lack of self-identity because we don't acknowledge that God formed us in our mother's womb. He created us for a purpose. And when we realize that and recognize that, then it will be easier for us to go boldly into our destiny. Sometimes we are hindered by our past because everyone wants to bring up what we did in our past. Or even us ourselves, we want to hinder ourselves because we are continuing to dwell on what happened in the past, what somebody did to us in the past. But you must understand that God created you. He formed you. He has prepared you for this time. Amen. It's time for us to allow him to lead us into what he has showed us. He has given us a glimpse of what he is already going to give us. He, let you, he has let you touch it. He has let you experience it. But now you are getting ready to walk into it. And if you don't walk into it with the boldness of the Holy Spirit, then we will be like these excuse makers. Uh-huh. And so we have to get to the point to where we are not becoming distracted by lies. Don't allow people to use that, well, didn't you used to? Uh, uh, or aren't you still? Yes, yes. Because I can still be a liar. I'm just not lying as much as I lied yesterday. Right. So they can say, aren't you still a liar? But guess what? God is working on me and taking me that Amen. process. Amen. And so I don't have to have it all together. Right. Don't let people think that you have to you say that you have to have it all together in order for God and do the work that he has called for you to do. That's not true. God is working on each and every one of us each and every day. And so he is ready to use you today. So don't become distracted by the lies that people try to conjure up against you because they have an excuse. Amen. Why they are doing what God has called for them to do. And so if we look at verse 33, it says, We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak, come from the Nephilim. We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we look the same to them. And so in order for us to walk boldly into our destiny, we have to silence the other voices. We have to know everyone isn't ready. We can't become distracted by lies, and we can't allow giants to overshadow our God. Amen. Like I talked about earlier, 2015 showed me some giants. And had I let it, them giants overshadow my God, I will not be standing here today. There will be some things, some situations, and some people that we see that may look strong, but we have to understand whose we are and who Amen. we are working for. God has prepared us. His Holy Spirit is in us. And the Word of God says that yes. He that is within us is greater than He that is Amen. in the world. Are coming our way, and the giants are trying to shut us down. We have to remember that the cross was Jesus' giant. The cross was Jesus' oh, well the cross, and that was what God had called for him to do. And so we cannot focus on destiny being this smooth sailing type thing. We have to go through the process and go through it boldly because if we don't, we will be shut down. Jesus' cross was the will of the Father. And we have to get to the point to where we are doing the will of the Father, regardless of what other people have said about us. Again, our destiny isn't given to us, but we act on it. And we are not acting on our own will, but we are acting on the will of God. And so we have to make sure that we are doing each and everything that God has called for us to do. Proverbs 28 1 says, The righteous are bold as a lion. And so we we have to get to the place to where we are as bold as a lion and do all that God has created for us to do. Uh -huh. We have to go in and possess all of the land. Yeah. We can't yeah. go in and yeah. take a little yeah. bit of the land. Yeah. We can't go in and peek into the land. Uh -huh. But we have to possess That's what right. God has called for yeah. us to possess. The Lord yeah. has called his Ooh, church to possess everything that he has called for us to possess. Yeah. He has called for us to be in yeah. this world yeah. and be a witness to the world. Yeah. And the Lord is calling us not to give up on the world, but the Lord is calling us to be a shining light into the world. Yeah. And so we can come back and possess His land. And so as I close this morning, remember that He who began a good work in you 
individually, he who began a good work in his church, yes. he who he began a good work in Liberty Hill, yes. will perform it until completion. Amen. And so we'll go into what God yes. has for you yes. to move into. Oh, man. Amen. 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 This morning, if you have never received Christ into your life,